lit. Roll up to the party. Roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party. Here we go again. We are on the road again, as they say. Just give me two seconds because I need to uh, just do a little bit. I've just run two seconds late. I need to open up another page so that we can um, do some work as well. Right, so the big Celtic news tonight. Uh, expecting to have a live Hatate and a bad new signing deals today. No pressure. Oh, if you watched the live last night, you would have seen that we got notification. There was a got notification just before I came on, and um, but if you're watching the live last night, uh, you would have seen the message come through that he had walked into the building. He had his pictures taken, and we showed you the pictures of him and um, walking upstairs. So somebody was a bit cheeky sitting in the reception of Celtic Park. Um, big up. Daniel Podden's next, please. There were rumours going about with that this morning saying there was an eight and a half million deal, but the Twitter account that did release that info only had about 56 subscribers. So um, I'm not too sure about that one yet, but there has to be something there. It's Podden's in the way, not that I know of just yet, but the phone is on, so we'll just keep an eye on that. Right, I have just watched the Gustav... Um, press conference from today. Wait a minute, I need to go to this channel and I need to go to lives. Two seconds because there we are, we're live there. I want to get the comments coming up on YouTube also so that I can uh, watch out for something. There we go. There he is. There he is. Right. And skip that. Let's jump onto that. And I choose on this channel. There we go. Going to give you a little bit of interesting information first, right? A resident zombie. A resident zombie. Uh, welcome to the party. Uh, welcome to the party. You know my name has uh, has been banned from this channel 14 times now. 14 times. Anyway, that's now 15. So uh, sad little, sad little person that he is. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get some of the comments in. Right, first of all, obviously, Gustav is in the building. Uh, we did talk about that last night. Uh, Swedish defender taking his first press conference today. I just watched it before we come on there. That's why there was a slight delay because I was catching up with the news. He says, yeah, it was interesting. He said there was interest from other clubs. But once you know that Celtic are in the building, uh, two settings. Seriously? Anyway, it says, once you know that Celtic are, are interested, there's only one team that you're going to, especially when you are from Sweden. It says, uh, especially when you're from Sweden, um, it says, uh, there's only one team that you are going for. Peter McGinn, he's going for a record 55. Yeah, he's going for a record 55 subscribe. You know, and the fact is, that, uh, we'll, go, we'll give him his two minutes of of uh, fame um yeah he's, he's now been banned 15 times from the channel so uh here's another one well, there we go there's another one and delete that one too right there is another video I, I, yeah i know is he is sub so obsessed purely obsessed right there is a video coming out at 7 45 celtic park time and that is going to be talking about the new the new battlefield training complex that looks absolutely amazing. Um, I want to talk about the Rangers ticket allocation thing as well on this live. It is only going to be a 30-minute live this evening. So uh, I get a feeling that like, and oh, there's something special coming on, on the channel tomorrow with regards of Gustav. So make sure, make sure that you check out the live tomorrow. 14 times by the way, it's 12 more. It's 12 more. <laughs> that is that. Right, anyway, let's get back to the Celtic news. And uh, Obviously, it came out tonight that Celtic have officially turned down the tickets for Ibrox. They wanted more than the seven or 800 that was on offer. Uh, despite the decision, Rangers are still anticipating being permitted away fans in December. And if they don't, they're going to go to the SPFL, they're going to cry, and they're going to say... They're going to say, um, you know, it's unfortunate that Celtic couldn't take fans, but they're going to cite rule I-27 if they're un unable to get requests to get, get granted tickets to Celtic Park. 
the, rule, the ruling of the rules of the Scottish Professional Football League reads, the home club must make provision for admission of such a reasonable number of visiting supporters at every home league match and playoff match. Celtic are never going to be in the playoff. More chance Rangers will be in the playoff this year. And I, as agreed in advance with the visiting club, in the event of their being unable to reach an agreement, not later than 14 days prior to the date of the league match or prior to the match in question, the number of visiting supporters allowed will be determined by the board whose decision shall be final and binding. So they're going to go crying to the SPFL and they're going to they're going to they're going to go crying to the SPFL and say we want we want our tickets. We want our tickets, man. Right? We want our tickets, and that's it. Just give us the big push. Stay home. We want our tickets. We're going, going to give them, please. Anyway, you're not getting your tickets. We're not taking them for Ibrox, because let's face it, you're an absolute shambles of a club, and it is all about keeping our fans safe. The Rangers say that they're going to increase. Now, it's not, you can increase, increase stewards all you want, right? Increase stewards all you want. The fact is, um, bottles can be thrown from a distance, and that was proven. And the fans aren't safe whatsoever at all. Our fans are not safe at Celtic at, um, Irox. Um, they're safe at Celtic Park because we don't let them near us. The fact that there has been numerous occasions where there have been objects thrown, thrown um, from a distance and injured Celtic fans. So that is the reason that Celtic have re have not accepted the tickets, and um, I think it's 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 absolutely fantastic that we turned down the tickets because they they brought this situation about. They brought them <laughs> give them a toilet so they can have, so they have a heard. Um, they turned they turned down the tickets, um, you know, and I'm I'm happy with the club with that. I'm happy with the fact that they have turned down the tickets and our fans will be safe, but. Should we give them tickets if if the SPFL say, look, you have to give them tickets? I don't know. I don't know how with that ruling. I mean, they're going to go to the SPFL and they're going to ask the board of the SPFL to give them, make sure that Celtic give them tickets. But then again, it's going to be, it has to be determined by the board. So who from Celtic is still on the board of the SPFL? <laughs> Anyway, let's get some. Let's get some of you amazing people. Paul Beard, get Paul at first because he always comments in the morning. Paul, you can stick that tickets. Uh, yep, uh, for, forced to give them. Uh, charge them two thousand a ticket. Yeah, here's a thought. If we have to give them, Argentina is in the house. Argentina, Argentina, Argentina. Um, yeah, if we if we have to give them tickets, who says that we have to give them at a reasonable price? We can surely offer them tickets, offer them, but we can um, we can offer them tickets. This has to be another one. San Francisco, release the dossier. I think you're a zombie, mate. So on that note, um, I think you're a zombie. Let's do some zombie killing tonight. And make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. Rangers FC, Kyle, Celtic FC, Wolverine. I think it's time to just uh, do some high users from channel just to get them out. Get the zombies hee haw. Um, message deleted by the one Celtic fans. Very good. Right. Let's do some zombie killing. Anyway, let's leave them to it. Right. Let's move on to the Celtic news. I wouldn't have given them a ticket. Right. There are a lot of people saying I wouldn't give them a ticket. Would you would you price them out tickets? But then again, yeah, make the make the tickets two thousand pounds a ticket. And just say, ticket touts, got the tickets. Ah, ah, that'd be good. Um, yeah, just tell them. But then again, you have to give the tickets directly to that club. So um they have many um, uh, no hands in paradise. Uh, no hands in paradise. Yep, remember, remember them well. Zombies, um, aim for the head. Any killers? Actually, I've been watching Game of Thrones. Uh, I've never watched Game of Thrones before, and the message has got me watching Game of Thrones. It's interesting to see the zombie effect on the Game of Thrones. Anyway, let's move on. 
his staff is in the building and he's been speaking about the fact that there was other teams in for him. But he said, you know, he said he, he knew the Swede that's just left and he said he hadn't spoke to him, but he's worked with him in the national team. He said he thinks it's a big move. It's a perfect move for him going forward. He says he's going from one team at the top of the table to another team. So it feels good. He says it's a step in the right direction for him. He's getting focused on knowing all the guys in the group. Uh, he's had his first training session with the squad will be tomorrow. And then his, so his first focus is going to be the fact that he's at a big club with high expectations. It's going to be a real fun journey. So <laughs> you don't know what the song is. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the party. Yep. And it is just a big party. Uh, is it? Well, I'm sorry. Just, I'll unban him again when I've got time. Anyway. Uh, so I know he's, he's, I didn't ban him, so he's all right there. Right, anyway, let's. Uh, <laughs> I'm just on zombie killing mode tonight. No Huns in Paradise. Right, I did on the video that's coming out later tonight. I, I spoke about what I think will be our strongest team. So make sure, sure that you check out that video. And now that's talking about our strongest team with the people that we've got that's fit and ready at the moment. And I think going forward, it'll still be our strongest team of the season. So make sure you check that video that comes out later this evening. Um, I hope no I hate the stench of the real buzz. Keep them out. Uh, let's get some let's get some comments in before we talk about some uh, the boys a winner. Uh, let's go. So Joseph said, I hope no I hate the stench uh, so bad. Hail, hail. Keep them out, says. And the Grampian boys are in the house. Here we go the Grampian girls, all Scottish clubs. Should give us the stand they can't fill. But the fact is, they're now saying that they've got 45,000 season ticket holders, but they had 45,000 45, season tickets before, and we've got the full stand. We all know the real reason that the Rangers stopped Celtic fans getting tickets for Ibrox, right? I was doubting myself there, I washed my hands. <laughs> San Fran Celtic. Sorry about that, mate. Sorry about that, but. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking no, no more nonsense with them. I've let them run free on the channel for a while enough at the time that they just disappeared. And the fact that one of them has set up 15 different accounts to comment on the page, uh, that says it all. Anyway, let's get back to some of the comments. I still, I think uh, we have a few. Have faith, Baz. Uh, uh, I would give them, oh, apart from the hands. Yep, uh, Lorna is in the house of tires. Uh, they're no party types. They are not party types and they're not welcome to the party in this house as you missed one david thompson ah, i'm not going to tell you. what i might do actually is i might get someone to be a moderator on the comments because trying to do this and moderate the comments at the same time as uh, here we boys, uh, so yeah, I might get somebody that is free when I am, so that you can, uh, or I might get, yeah, I might get a couple of folk just to come on, uh, get <laughs> a zombie spotter. Yeah, I need a zombie spotter on the channel just for the comments. So uh, yeah, nominate Lanky, yes, <laughs> somebody, right? Nominate Lanky, he's a good uh, bouncer for the no on, on the chat. Yeah, that's it, Alan. That is it. We need someone to protect the door of the gate to the most fantastic house on the internet. Right, let's get back to good stuff. Zombie killer, yeah. Specialist zombie killer. And you have to have, you have to wear, yeah, anyway. <laughs> hey, Uncle Stu. Right, let's get back to it. Uh, good stuff was talking about the fact that there was other clubs. Now, it was a really good interview from him. And if you remember the live last night, that was amazing on the live last night, the fact that we got the little notification first. And yes, everyone said that at the... On the chat this morning, they want Daniel to be coming through live on the phone tonight. So let's let's hope we get some some. Um, I don't think anything will come through tonight. The big news: there is other news about a player that's going out on loan, but we spoke about that before in the video. I will uh, block button simples. Yeah, I think once you are a moderator, you can do that. I think. Anyway, the Armas Sniper. There you go, Green Litchie. You've got it. You've got it in one. So there was other teams looking out for Gustav, and he said, as soon as he knew that Celtic were interested, he said, that was it. Boom, deal done. He said, he points out to the fact that Celtic have a brilliant history of signing Swedish players like Henrik Larsson, Johan Malby, Mikael Lustig. And did you like the video last night? 
And I was right last night, didn't I? Once we got the notification through, I did say Celtic will either go for a 6 p.m. The fact I think that um, they wanted to get as much news coverage as possible. So they put it out last night and then obviously get the guy lined up for a media interview today. So it's all about dominating as much of the back pages as, as we said. And I did say on the live last night, wait till six o'clock and bang on six o'clock, Celtic put out the Mikel video where uh, on social media, uh, Mikel says, hey, boys and girls, it's Mikel here. Celtic always need a good Sweden its team. <laughs> Ten minutes after that, boom, signing in the door, singing I'm no Billy, I'm a Tim. Yep, 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 definitely. Uh, there we go, David. Thank you for that. There we go. And where is he? David Thompson. Hey, Jews are on channel. Ah, see, you're not clever enough to sort of not comment when you know you're going to get banned. Anyway, it's probably the same guy. Um, because he did have another name as well. Uh, you don't mind you, the buzz. <laughs> um, he had, you know that McFitter or whatever, McFarter? Yeah, that was the same guy. Anyway, and COVID bit, that's better. <laughs> yep, that's true. Probably true. Um, I mean, on Celtic Twitter, have made an eight. Right, I'm, I'm, I was talking about this earlier. Where, a lot of people on Celtic Twitter were talking about it, where, the, where it originated from was a Twitter account down in Wolverhampton and only had 46, 46 um, followers on Twitter. Let me see if I could get it back up. Because I've seen it this morning. Yeah. Most of the club. Yeah, there. And uh, where is it? There's Thames and Rose. Yeah, the, the account that released the information this morning only had 46 subscribers. So there was a bit of confusion whether or not it was true or not. Um, surprises. Could be the fact that they're just trying to drum up interest. So uh, with regards to that 8 million deal in place for Daniel, I'm not too sure about it. It was, it was just a, um, it was a Twitter account with only 46 subscribers. So uh, why are people tagging me? Lanky's in the house. We're tagging you because we need an Armour sniper. We need an Armour sniper. And I'm looking for somebody that is going to knows the tunes, that knows the revs, and can be a moderator on the channel. Lanky, there we go. So if I do this, um, manage moderation, standard manage moderation, levels. There we go. I just put them on time out. Lanky, you are now moderator. <laughs> Lanky, you are now moderator for the channel this evening. You can only give them a time, but you can't. Um, I'm going to see the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Lanky, you are a moderator for this evening if you're still kicking about. If you see a hun, kick them off. Kick them off. Anyway, Lanky, go in for me. San Francisco's done. He's done for this evening. Right, let's get to... Uh, so why do media guys ask stupid questions? Because <sighs> it's a job. It's a job. And if you notice, there was... there was uh, Why do they ask stupid questions? And if you looked at the Lee Griffiths interview uh, from the other evening... Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, if you look at the Lee Griffiths interview, you knew that the Scottish media... Uh, lanky has got the spot right. You know that the Scottish media would put a spin on that interview, and they did. And they put out a headline saying, fans were going to kill me, says Lee Griffiths. Honest to God. And it's like, why? They've just, do you know, the, the media back in Scotland are just, let's just leave it at that. Because we all know what the, the media back in Scotland are like, and the fact that they do ask crazy ass questions and they'll put a spin on absolutely anything. And, and you just knew they would do that with that interview that Lee did down in Australia. He's not even in Scotland. He probably doesn't even look at it. Anyway, the fact that is uh, what title in reference to, did I miss something about Lager? Um, I can't even remind me what I called this. Let me go to saying Celtic said no chance. No, Celtic said no chance to. Let me see, I'm sticking on some Parkers. Um, Celtic said no chance to tickets 
at Ibrox. Celtic have turned it is official. It's came out this evening. It is official that Celtic have turned down the tickets for the away allocation for Ibrox. We all knew this was coming, and it's been spoke about for. Um, Oh my God, it doesn't block us. You can't even block me. You can only block, block folk in the comments. Uh, we all know Paul Baird. Yeah, you got it in one poll, so we'll put that one up and leave that for a while. Uh, good to get it like, thank you. So yeah, so the fact that they have turned them have turned down the tickets uh, due to safety concerns, Rangers come back and said, look, we're going to put more stewards in. It's nothing to do with the amount of stewards between fans. You know, it's the distance between the fans. You would have to put, you would have to miss it a whole set so that it stop throwing stuff. And this is where it comes down. It's down to safety. It is all down to the safety of our fans. And as the, the current away allocation sits, and it's not just our fans that have said you know, they're fed up of getting missiles thrown at them. There's been other teams have said, look, we get stuff thrown at us too. You know, so the fact that Celtic have said no to the tickets, Rangers are going to go crying to the SPFL and they're going to say, oh, we want our tickets. And they're going to cite ruling I-27 um, if Celtic were unable to request tickets to the Sevconians. Anyway, that's enough about them. We've spoke about them a bit. A lot of people have said, tell them to ram their tickets. To be fair, I don't I don't want them back in Celtic Park ever. I think the atmosphere, although it has killed the atmosphere to, for television, when you look at the bigger picture, is it doing harm to the game? Eh, probably, you know, most likely. Is it, does it, is it as good as, uh, yeah, you can throw a bottle of a Stuart's head. Simple. Exactly, Stuart. Exactly. Um, Ian Fleming, right? I knew <laughs> we'll get Stuart's comment up. Uh, and this is the problem. It is this, the gap between the fans. When the fans were in a completely different stance, when Celtic had the broom on stands, it's kind of, and they had the corner sections kind of, you couldn't get near them, right? It was harder to throw anything at away fans at Ibrox. You know, but they've they're insistent on only giving Celtic seven hundred. It has ruined it. Yep, as an overseas spectacle, it's ruined it because the singing, right? Let's face it. And uh, any news on the French lad Merlin? Not not as yet. Jock Steen is right. Football is nothing without fans. It is nothing without fans. But what is going to happen? You have to think back to the glass thrown on the pitch at half time. When Joe Hart comes onto the pitch and he sees a glass bottle, if a player had slipped in the pitch, if Joe Hart had slipped in the pitch, is that acceptable in this day and age? Now, I know the ultras and everything at Ibrox think they're the big hard men and all the rest of it. And, um, you know, and, and they, if they want to go out fighting outside the grounds and things like that, let them do it. But what happened to football being a, a modern family experience? No, uh, no, there's no news on him yet, Alan. Um, what happened to football being a family-friendly experience? Now, the the games against them are never family-friendly. I had tickets for about uh, 15, 16 years for my kids, and they never, never got to go to a Celtic old Rangers game or even once they died. Um, they never got to go to a game with them purely for the fact that I didn't want them to be subject to the bile that comes from them. Um, let's face it, they've only got two things that they can sing about uh, when when the players. At least we have uh, the onion bears are always green. At least we have songs of soul and grace. And um, you know, our songs are what they are. And we always make and the, the, the thing is Celtic always bring out songs that are way better and they come on to be total anthems of the club and that are not sectarian. You know, and this nonsense that happened back in um, back in the day when after Lenny and after that time, and I'm going to ask Alan Thompson, the next time Tom was over here, I'm going to ask him, what did that little fat Sally say to Lenny? And I'm going to ask him to his face. I'm going to ask him. So, Tomo, the next time you're over here, you know I will see you and uh, we'll have that little conversation. I'm going to see if he comes out with anything. Nobody knows what was said, but after that, we had the whole, the act that made sure that Celtic fans and any Celtic fans couldn't sing songs. The rule of honour was said to be sectarian. It wasn't. It went through the courts umpteen times and it was, wasn't deemed sectarian at all. So, you know, the only thing that they've got that bring any value to the game is silence. When Celtic silence them after we score. Anyway, glass on the pitch, nothing happens. 
I don't think so. Yes. You know, glass on the... Whatever happened to that? Absolutely nothing. Well, that CCTV that they've got in the grounds and nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. Anyway, unless we get the full brewery, uh, boom on stand, uh, being back to paradise, 10 pound to get in. Yep, definitely. Definitely. I think, well, Celtic have opened up. Uh, Celtic jumped the gun. And news, cheers for those who tagging me. You're some guy, cheers. Uh, that, that's it, thank you. Cheers to you for guarding the gates. Anyway, let's get back to talking about them. Celtic played a blinder because they turned down the tickets for them and then they opened up all the bars in Celtic Park and you're getting people that are going to go to the bars in Celtic Park anyway. So I think that's even that's even that's better for us Celtic fans and you can watch the game in. If we ban them on safety grounds, I don't think we can ban them um, on safety grounds. And the media made a just the media make us look bad guys. No, they don't. They don't make us look bad. Well, they do when they, they just talk about anything to try. I can remember back in the nineties if Celtic put a good story on, say, a Thursday or a Friday. If Celtic put on a good story, put on a good news story, say something positive came out of Celtic Park, you could guarantee that David Murray would get on the phone and get on the phone to Chuck Young and all his little hanger-ons that he had at the time. And it would get them to concoct a story. And you've got to remember, the biggest one was the whole 750 million stadium. And I believe they've come up with some nonsense like that again. You know, remember the, the nonsense that they had with that. Anyway, let's get back to the Celtic news. So the Gustav said there were other teams in, in, in for him. But after he, he, knew, he knew Carol Starfelt, he said he spoke to Carol Starfelt briefly. Um, and he said it's a great club. Absolutely great club. And um, when you think about there's maybe one Swede that wasn't too good. Freddie Lundberg. But anyway, we'll not talk about that. Uh, Celtic Rangers tickets. We have reduced the their, We have refused their allocation. Let me see if there's any more Celtic news. How long have we been online? Uh, we've been on for 27 minutes. I brought Sands. I brought Sands. Uh, Lanky Clayton, out of bad guy, like a team. Excellent, I'm good at this. I hope he is. Anyway, right, let's move on and see if there's any more Celtic news. Wilson Lowell handed a Celtic extension. I talk about that in the video this evening, so make sure to check out the video that comes out at 7.45, I think it is, UK uh, Celtic Park time. Um, yep, yeah, it is. It's done deal. The all Nigerian soccer are talking about it. Yeah, Fleetwood Town official site. So Fleetwood Town have put out a statement. Say, oh, and there's one I missed earlier. Actually, Ben Summers. Ben Summers has been officially unveiled at Dunfermline also. So uh, there he is with his Fleetwood Town t-shirt. Oh, well, yeah, that's good. That's good. And Ben Summers. Ben Summers talking about the fact also that he is looking forward to playing at Dunfermline. And he thinks that will be great for him to be playing against Men, as it is, because they've obviously been playing in the in the boys and and under twenty ones and such the B team, but to be out there playing against uh, first team football, he said it should really progress him as a midfield player. Um, for the just as well, she got me a bag of cans then. Eh? Tom, yes, and make sure we will be going live tomorrow. Um, we'll be going live at nineteen sixteen Celtic Park time. I will have a pizza and a bag of cans from that one because uh, it will be a big one, a big long special one as normal. Is uh, Chuck Young, the famous Saint Merman fan? Yeah, yeah. Ben Summers, uh, glad he got a new deal. Yeah, Ben Summers has obviously got the new deal. Bolson Lowell's got the new deal as well. The other one that we thought was going to get the new deal is Rocco Vata, and we did ask in the video last night. If you think we should sell Rocco Vata, that still went a bit quiet. I hope Brody keeps his job. Uh, not a great start. Uh, I've not really looked at what, uh, the first game, but anyway, uh, let's move on. They should pay Celtic and Zombie Games at Hamden. Should they? Uh, Lanky deserves a raise. Has he, been, has he banned anybody yet? <laughs> anyway, they should play, Stuart goes on to say, they should play Celtic and Zombie Games at Hamden. So there's a 50-50 split of fans. That would make it interesting. Uh, cheers, I've turned the channel. Uh, uh, Banner fell out with channels with robot voices speaking crap. 
yeah, I've got to apologise for that because that was me that started that nonsense and uh, I knew it was something that could probably catch on, hence the reason for changing the channel um, back in December last year. So yeah, I could have to apologise for all those other channels. But then there is another channel where it's actually a safe Korean fan that, that does it. Anyway, right. Uh, should Celtic and Rangers, there's one that we should have started a poll on. I'll maybe talk about this tomorrow evening in depth. Should Celtic Rangers play at Hamden? so that there is an equal share. Um, but then that would mean that both clubs would then have to rent Hamden and, you, you know, you're not going to... I don't know. I don't know. Tell me, but you, tell me your thoughts. The riots afterwards. Yeah. That'd be going... Would there be... Right. I, I don't think there would be because let's face it, the only ones that are going to be fighting are the Onion Bears, the Green Brigade and the boys. I don't think that's whole-scale riots. Uh, no, it's not a football chat one. Unlucky. I've also got WhatsApp popping up on my laptop now. So there. Yeah, they should. Uh, did you see the centre? Um, no, I didn't. No, I, don't, I never watched them. Uh, Love it says Hell, Hell and let me see. Hamden idea fixes that. Uh, yeah, fixes what they want fix. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It, it fixes the nothing going to Hampton and play 50-50. I think uh, there will eventually be a riot. We play too many times. Yeah, we do play. There's a thought as well then. Should should the league be changed? Is it time? We've spoke about it often enough. Now, the Sky deal is complete. Absolutely. It's not worth it. It's not worth any money. Celtic could generate a lot more money on, on online. And I think it'll be interesting to see the, the way that the online th thing happens because um, I don't think Celtic season told we were like, not when, um, Hamden is had Hamden is terrible. If anything, it should be played at Murrayfield because, I th and I think Murray should, that's a whole different topic of conversation. Murray, Murrayfield should be the national stadium because you can come in for two different directions and keep the fans completely away from each other. Hamden is one of the worst grounds that I hate going to, and uh, it's just it's a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. And there's nothing wrong about it. Anyway, let's move back to. Um, talking about Celtic, uh, Boston is away down there. That is official. They've come out. Dublin or Boston Law will sign a long-term contract with Celtic. So it's come out as well that he has signed a long-term contract with Celtic. Let me just see what, how many years has been added on to his current contract. Keeps him at Celtic back until 2026. So it's another year that's been... Uh, Celtic are delighted to announce that Boston Law has signed a contract extension till the summer of 2026, the club announced today. After putting pen to paper, he'll go on a, a season-long loan at English League One side Fleetwood Town, managed by former captain uh, Scott Brown. I think Scott Brown, he'll be fine whatever happens this season. He's, he's in there, and plus their owner is in America and jails, you know. Celtic have generated way more money in Japan than Sevco. Uh, no, they shouldn't play there. It's a dump. Uh, do you think do you think money feels a dump? It's better than Hamden. It's better than Hamden, Paul. A lot better. Um, it's newer. <laughs> it's by a few years. Uh, anyway, Danny Dion is a bovel merchant. <laughs> is that? Did you ever watch that one? Oh, yeah. Oh. And the, th the thing is, he's at Ibrox at the time. Yeah, we'll have a laugh at Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer, right? <laughs> He's sitting in the car park between the two fans. Now, if you've ever been in a away game at Ibrox, you know the fact that they have the car park in between the fans. There's about a hundred yard gap between Celtic fans and Rangers fans when we got the old, when we got the full Broomland Broomland stands. And he's standing there going, "Oh, you can feel the atmosphere. Yeah, it's all kicking off." No, it's not, Danny. There's a big line of coppers along the roads, right? Coppers on the horses, there, and you kind of get past them. You've then got a hundred yards waste ground in the car park, and then you've got another line of coppers keeping us apart. It, it was the safest game. They've turned what was the safest game in Scottish football into one of the most dangerous games for fans. And that's fact. Any Celtic fan that will tell you, when we had the full stand, it was one of the safest games at anywhere because of the distance that you're kept between us. You know, there were, you couldn't get... Uh, I was talking about Hamden. Yeah, Hamden. Paul, yeah, Hamden. Let's get back to uh, the Bovril man, right? Bovril merchant. Danny Dyer, he's a liar. Yeah, Danny Dyer, right? Rangers have single-handedly turned what was the safest game to go to in Scotland 
And if you can say no, it was no, it wasn't. Yes, it was because Celtic would park their buses down the industrial estate. Rangers fans couldn't get anywhere around that way, right? They, you had the car park splitting the fans. You had about 100 yards between fans. You had two lines at coppers, coppers on horses and everything. You couldn't get anywhere near each other. Now Celtic fans have got to walk down what is like a cordon of death. They've got these 12-foot bloody walls trying to keep us apart. They then get taken into the ground where they're even closer to their away fans than ever before. So how could Safe Conian say that it is safer? It's not safer. It isn't safer. And let's remind ourselves why. Let's remind ourselves. Oswan Edwards. Let me think. Lee Griffiths. Scoring a cracker. Grabbing the corner flag and owning that flag. Remember the time that he actually wiped his nose with the flagpole, with the flag at Irox, taking a corner. Anyway, anyway, something dangerous for my former self. Anyway, so true. Uh, remember that well, there was no trouble. At, uh, there wasn't. The only time anyone got lifted outside Irox, right, before a game, is if you were pissed. As if you were pissed. That was the only time. The only time. Uh, they got three sections in the upper section, and uh, they got uh, 115. Yep. You know, so even at Celtic Park, it was still, it was still safer. Because you couldn't, after a certain time of day, when they got... The reallocation at Celtic Park. Uh, I love Griffin. He put the scarf on the goalpost at Windsor. Yep, and he done. I, I was there when he done it many times, many times. Uh, can't guarantee Sutton's safety. Yes, they cannot guarantee uh, Chris Sutton's safety at a game. So they banned Chris Sutton from going to games because um, can you hate them showing up in the wrong ground? Yeah, that's true. Uh, they can't guarantee. We'll get that one up. Uh, there wasn't a stadium years ago when Celtic and the home. Right, let's see. There is 400 people on the live. And are Hartson and Stutton still banned? I'm not sure. There is 400 people watching the live. There's 118 thumbs up. So make sure that you give the uh, a thumbs up. I said I was only staying on for half an hour. You do this every time. I'm staying on for 45 minutes because... The, the channel does take a bit of a nosedive once um, Snide FM starts. So I know a lot of, oh, wait, this. Oh, no, it's not, it's not, it's not Celtic news. It's not Celtic news. And uh, anyway, Beach Ball Sunday. <laughs> that was one of the best. Beach Ball Sunday. Oh, and remember, another good one is the Broomlawn stand. That's when there was no wind at all. And then right before the game, the Green Brigade let off a green light and orange flare. Uh, smoke and the, three, the smoke just goes up in three, col in three columns. That was absolutely fantastic. And one of my best, my best memories of being uh, um, stop winging your muddy. Ah, oh, Edward Diver, who's winging? And uh, yeah, ban Edward Diver just for the sake of it. <laughs> it's anyway, forty-five minutes not good enough for you. Nah. My age, not a chance. Uh, done long run. There we go. Uh, right, anyway. So the, the best time that I had at Ibrox, we, we always managed to get tickets for either behind the goals or nearer towards the corner behind them. And there was one time that this absolute stunner walks down the staircase. And I'm like, what are you doing with him? Why are you with him? He's a fucking... And she starts, she starts giggling, laughing, right? I'm joking, Edward. I'm joking. Um... The, 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 the lassie starts giggling and laughing because I'm like, what are you doing with him? He's a horrible one. Right? And this big guy, this big meat beef eater comes walking down the stairs. Yeah, get it the fucking, get it whatever. And then um, totally going off in one and I'm getting it. Oh, check you. You've got that. Anyway, Edwards is banned. <laughs> Don't ban him. <laughs> anyway, Mint Harson. Right, let's move on. Let's catch up with a little bit Celtic news before we end the video. Uh, Celtic Sort Academy and House Extension. Uh, that's, check out the video that's coming up in about an hour and a bit. It's 7.45 Celtic part time. The reason I'm cutting it short is I do see the channel taking a dive once Snide FM starts. There seems to be a lot of you love listening to Snide FM. I have no idea why. Um, and it'll be Bolson Lowell, Bolson Lowell, Lager. La oh, there's big news. Big, big news on the channel tomorrow evening. 
um, on the live. So make sure that you watch. I need to make sure I get it all sorted. Uh, hurry up, <laughs> I need. That's, I'm not even putting that one up. Not even putting that one. Up. Right, we're on forty minutes. On forty minutes. <laughs> Cheers, bear. Uh, Edward hasn't been banned. So the news that we started off the video with is the fact that Celtic have officially turned down the tickets for Irox. Rangers will go and complain to the SPFL if Celtic do not give them their tickets in the December. They're going to go to the SPFL and they're going to cite rule I-7 if they're unable to have their request granted by Celtic. The ruling means the, the home club must make provision for admission of a, such a reasonable number of away visiting support. Okay, give them 20 seconds. Um, from every home league match and playoff match. It must be agreed in advance with the club and an event that have been unable to agree such a number no later than 14 days prior to the date of the match of play. Um, the away club will then go to the board of the SPSFL and request a number of visiting supporting tickets and the board's decision will be final. So they're going to be greeting <laughs> Clyde FM. Um, yeah, Clyde FM. Who listens to Clyde FM? Anyway, quite a lot of people on YouTube. So I've not listened to Snyder FM for 20 years. Make sure that you check out the video that comes out later. And the big news tomorrow night is there's going to be a Gustav special. There is going to be a Gustav special on the video tomorrow night. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to this one. Looking forward to this one. Uh, see you tomorrow, bud. Yep. Let's cut the video now. We're on 40 minutes. I've got to go and get ready. Uh, Sean, don't listen to that. Mate, nah, nobody listens to it. Nobody listens to it. That is now my mother trying to get a hold of me. It is time to finish the video. It's been fantastic again this evening. Thanks to everyone that's watched the video. There is, let me check the thumbs up. Make sure that you all give the thumbs up a four before we finish. Uh, see you tomorrow. Remember, it is Friday tomorrow. It is the big one. We do go on for a bit longer. There is 155 thumbs up. And we've now been on for 41 minutes. And I just need to get rid of some comments. Where is that one? Uh, hide current comment. There we go. That's done that. Let's get the final comments. It's all hail, 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 hail. Uh, see you tomorrow. Baz, this is Joseph Mac. Have a great night and cheers, everyone. Lorna, you get <laughs> get Hattati news. Uh, get, what is that one? Uh, Steve Green and White uh, attracting some amount of zombies. Am I attracting zombies? Uh, is he not doing his job? Anyway, yeah, who's attracting zombies? They're having to wait a good while. Sing up the ra. Anyway, have a great evening, Celtic fans. I'll see you tomorrow night. Big Gustav news tomorrow night. And on that note, have a great evening, Celtic fans all around the world. Let roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party, roll up to the party, roll up, roll up.